I've been having a lot of fun with a game called Keeper RL. It feels like a cross between RimWorld, Dungeon Keeper, and a roguelike. The primary mode of play is that you choose a keeper and craft your own dungeon and fill it with minions. As you rise in power, you'll begin to attract negative attention and have to repel invasions. You win by conquering all your enemies, and once you've won, you can choose to retire and your dungeon will become a lair that other players can raid in the other mode of play that this game offers, called the Adventurer. Necromancy isn't the main focus of the game, but it is an element of it, and you can choose to recruit a bunch of undead minions to defend your lair with. Even if necromancy wasn't a part of this game though, it'd still be a masterpiece in my opinion. To begin, you choose a keeper. There's three different kinds of keepers, an evil mage, an evil knight, and a not-so-evil knight. If you choose mage, you begin with four slave imps that can be replaced free of cost if they die. You also get the ability to learn and cast spells and free technology for basic magic. This means you can build bookshelves and recruit units like orc shamans from the get-go. The downside is that you're somewhat frail. This is certainly the squishy caster option. If you choose the evil knight, you begin with a group of peasants and the technology to make good equipment like steel swords and armor. The peasants are lousy workers compared to the imps, but the quick access to good weapons technology made the knight an easier choice for me as a beginner. He's also a lot tougher in fights, of course. The downside to the knight is he can never cast advanced spells, although he can learn basic ones like heal and heal other. If you choose mage, you'll have no access to metal weaponry until you've gone on raids and defeated a bunch of enemies and leveled up. Similarly, a knight will have no access to magic or spellcasters until he's done the same. You begin by telling your workers to chop wood and dig. I always dig my lair into a mountain, but you can also decide to build structures externally if you wish. Inside your base, you'll need to craft beds for you and your minions to sleep in, as well as training dummies for melee units to train with, and bookcases for your magic units to learn magic from. You'll also want crafting stations to begin churning out equipment for your minions. The undead minions you can recruit are zombies, skeletons, vampires, mummies, and ghosts. To recruit them, you'll need to make a few gravestones. These should be built in a chamber that's far away from the rest of your dungeon, because corpses will be brought there by your workers. These corpses will rot, and poisonous gases will be released until the corpse withers away into a skeleton. You'll also have to build coffins. These serve as beds for the undead minions. Skeleton minions will also require archery targets to practice with. All kinds of keepers can build prisons and order enemy humanoids to be captured. Captured enemies will become workers and do tasks like construction, harvesting, mining, and hauling. If you build a torture chamber, you can order prisoners to be tortured. This has a high chance of killing the prisoner, but if they survive, they will join your army. This is especially useful if you've captured high quality enemies like knights, dwarves, and elves. Knights are great in combat, dwarves excel at mining, and elves are very good at crafting jewelry. If you have a lot of prisoners, you'll need a big army to keep them from revolting. It can happen that after a big battle, your army is depleted enough that a revolt becomes likely. In this case, it's best to begin torturing prisoners immediately. If they die, they can no longer revolt. If they survive, your army gets replenished. In addition to undead, you can recruit all kinds of brilliant creatures like goblins, orcs, ogres, and harpies, as well as all kinds of beasts like bears and wolves. Of special interest are the demons. The Ghost, the Succubus, and the Doppelganger. For some reason, the Ghost is classified as a demon, and requires a demon shrine to be recruited. The Succubus will wander around the base, boosting the morale of your minions, and can get impregnated by a sleeping minion. If you've got a high level enough character, with the correct research and ingredients, a pregnant Succubus can give birth to a legendary beast, or a legendary humanoid. These are very strong units. Honestly, I love this game. I think you probably will too. It's such a nice mix of strategy, roguelike, and base building. Death is permanent like in a roguelike, so be careful. I'd say a lot more, but I don't want to give too much away. 
There's some very clever solutions to troublesome enemies. Sometimes you can kill an entire faction without ever landing a strike. My only criticism is that I would like to see more units of all types, especially more types of undead. Also, zombies are pretty pathetic, and more trouble than they're worth. They're horribly slow and perform very badly in combat. I wouldn't bother recruiting them at all, actually. Skeletons and vampires are the best, and mummies are just okay. Ghosts float around as invulnerable scouts. I'm giving this a 9.4 out of 10 for its minion mechanics. It scores well in everything, and only slightly falls down for the crafting aspect. There's not really any minion crafting in this. If you build the required structures and acquire the correct resources, then the minions become available for recruitment. If the crafting was a bit more in-depth, I'd score higher here. Your minions are useful, plentiful, and permanent. You craft a dungeon and fill it full of minions and traps, craft equipment for your minions to use to defend against invaders, capture invaders as prisoners, can torture them, and so much more I didn't touch on. This is a brief look at the game, after all. As a final note, there's also a necromancy mod for the game. It's called Necromancer 26, and I'll link it in the description. If you install it, you'll get the fourth Keeper option, the Vampire Lord. This gives you a Vampire Keeper to play with, and he can only recruit undead units. I tested this, and it's pretty good. Your main workers are skeletons, and these will dig for you, but they also work as warriors. One problem I found is that after a while, sometimes the skeletons just want to train instead of work, so you'll have to tell them manually to stop training, and then they'll get back to work. I decided not to use the mod, just because I, I enjoy having the orcs and the ogres and the other non-undead minions around, but this is a neat option for those among us looking for a strictly necromancer experience. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video, I'll see you next time. I've got more necromancer content coming your way.